It's critical to understand that people change and so do relationships. We may cling on to people out of fear of being alone, even when it clearly shows they have plainly moved on. However, their power in letting go comes from understanding that you deserve more than what someone has left of you over time. It is not about being needy or demanding. It is about appreciating yourself enough to reject others who do not value you. In this video, we'll uncover the truth about what really happens when you give fake friends too much attention. Number 1. They avoid physical contact as if it were the plague. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Gossip and hate. Physical contact are not just related to romantic relationships or friendly touches. Physical contact is a fundamental aspect of human interaction, used to connect and develop trust. What do I mean by this? When someone goes out of their way to avoid even the most casual contact? The answer is not pretty. They're delivering an obvious signal that they're uncomfortable with you, so pay attention. Have you ever had a mate or colleague who appeared to recoil whenever you reached out for a handshake or a pleasant pat on the back? At first, it may seem as if you are imagining things, but then you realized it was just you they weren't warm and tactile with. They were cool with everyone else, but when it came to you, it was like you had a plague. This has happened to me too. It wasn't long before I realized that their avoidance of physical contact was more than just a quirk. It was a deliberate action to keep me at a distance. Here's the controversial part. Physical contact is an essential element of human interaction, and when someone repeatedly avoids it, they are signaling a lack of comfort or connection. Sure, some people are simply not touchy-feely, which is understood. However, when they are fine hugging others but tighten up around you, it is a red flag that something is wrong. They despise you enough, but scared to say so outright. Despite that, their body language speaks plenty, and let's be honest, we've all been on both sides of this dilemma. Maybe you've dodged a handshake or leaned back when someone got too close because you weren't feeling them. Or maybe you've been on the other end and wondered why everyone seemed to flinch around you. It is uncomfortable. It is awkward. And it's typically an indication that the relationship isn't as strong as you'd like to believe. But here's the deeper truth. Physical contact is an essential component of human connection. It's how we express trust, warmth and empathy. When someone avoids you, they are avoiding more than just physical contact. They are avoiding intimacy and vulnerability. They are holding you at arm's way, literally and metaphorically. That is a clear indication of an underlying problem in the relationship. I've learned to pay attention to these indications even when it's difficult to recognize what they represent. I used to overlook the warning flags, thinking myself that someone's hesitation to approach was simply a personality attribute. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it was about me and our relationship. When I finally tackled the matter, it resulted in some difficult conversations and in some cases, the end of the relationship. But it also relieved me of the frustration of not understanding why things felt strange. As a matter of fact, don't dismiss the indicators of when someone is avoiding physical touches with you. It's more than a preference. It expresses their level of comfort and connection with you. If you see this tendency, don't be hesitant to discuss it. It may lead to a better understanding or signal that the relationship isn't as strong. In any case, confronting the truth is preferable to living in denial. Remember that you deserve relationships where physical touch isn't something to be avoided, but something that happens naturally and comfortably. These small gestures build trust and connection. If someone consistently avoids them, it's a sign that something isn't, right? Do not be hesitant to ask harsh questions and 
if necessary, make painful judgments. Life is too brief to spend surrounded by people who keep you at a distance, both literally and metaphorically. Number two. They disappear from sight when you ask for their assistance. Let's be honest, nothing shows the genuine character of a relationship like a catastrophe. When the going gets tough, you discover who your true friends are. So what does it convey? When people leave you when you need them the most, it's more than simply flakiness. It's a clear indication that they're not as invested in you as you would have assumed. And let's face it, when someone disappears on you at your darkest hours, it is not only upsetting, but also a betrayal. I learned some of this the hard way, at a particularly difficult period in my life, when I was dealing with a serious personal issue. I turned to the people. I considered close friends expecting some level of support, even if it was just a text or a quick call. But guess what? The people I thought would be there for me suddenly had every excuse in the book. I'm so swamped at work. Sorry, I'm just really busy right now. I will check in with you later. Spoiler alert. They never did. And here's what happens. People enjoy talking about how they'll always be there for you. However, when it comes down to it, many of them are only there for the good times. They'll party with you, laugh with you, and enjoy the highlights of your life. But when things get serious, they are nowhere to be found. It's easier for people to avoid you than to deal with your pain or discomfort. They don't want to be involved in your troubles since, deep down, they don't care enough to be present when it matters. And to be brutally honest, true support isn't about convenience. It's about being there when it count when it's uncomfortable to bear, and when it's the last thing you want to do. People who disappear when you need them the most aren't just being inconsiderate. They're showing you exactly where you stand in their life. They're saying without words, your problems aren't worth my time. I remember feeling absolutely gutted when I realized that the people I'd been there for in the past, during their breakups, their family dramas, their career setbacks, couldn't be bothered to return the favor. It was a wake-up call and not a pleasant one. However, it was also a lesson I needed to learn. Note that not everyone who smiles at you is actually supportive. Support is the cornerstone of any effective connection. It's easy to be around while everything's going well, but the true test of a relationship is how people react when things go wrong. If someone disappears just when you need them, they're not simply failing you. They are showing you that they were never truly present in the first place. But don't let their absence make you bitter. Instead, use it as a filter to sift through. People that do deserve to be in your life are those who stick around, check in, and show up even when it is inconvenient. Those are the people who genuinely matter as are their relationships. Finally, you should nurture, love, and cherish. Life is too short to invest throughout fair weather. Friends, surround yourself with people who will support you throughout the storm, and not just bask in the sun. Because when you find those rare folks who stay when the chips are down, you've discovered something worth holding on to, and for those who vanish, let them go. They have already revealed you their true colors. Number three, they gossip about you behind your back. Gossiping is the social poison that spreads like wildfire and destroys relationships in an instant. The truth about gossip is that it is never as benign as people make it out to be. When someone you consider a friend talks behind your back, they are not just sharing a harmless anecdote. They are intentionally destroying your trust, reputation, and relationship. And let's be honest. When people gossip about you, it's an obvious indication that they don't respect you, regardless of how friendly they appear to you. I've been the topic of gossip before. 
and let me tell you, it's one of the most upsetting situations. I once confided in someone I considered a close friend about a personal matter I needed to vent to relieve some of the weight I was carrying. Something and trusted this friend to keep it between us. But within days, elements of that talk began to circulate, twisted and exaggerated. It was like a game of telephone, except the message wasn't simply being lost. It was being weaponized against me. The person I trusted had used my weakness to entertain others. Here's the truth. Folks who gossip about you aren't simply venting or sharing their concerns. They're playing a power game. Gossip is a technique for them to elevate themselves while bringing you down, without having to confront you directly. It's cowardly, it's manipulative, and it's toxic. They're not just damaging your reputation. They are undermining the very foundation of trust that any genuine connection is built upon. They're probably spilling your tea when you're not present. It's a betrayal of the worst kind since it happens in the shadows, without giving you a chance to defend yourself or even understand what's said. Here's where things become extremely controversial. I remember addressing a friend who gossiped about me, expecting an apology. Instead of providing an explanation, they pretended that it was no big deal, dismissing it as innocuous conversation. But here's the thing. Gossip is never harmless. It's a betrayal, plain and easy. And it says far more about the one spreading it than the person it's about. If you think this video was eye-opening, wait till you watch this one on your screen. Like and subscribe. And if you think this video was eye-opening, wait till you watch this one on your screen.